In the previous lecture, we discussed musical instruments known as stringed instruments. And some examples of such instruments are pianos, guitars, and violins. Now, how exactly does a stringed instrument produce sound? Well, if we pluck the string on that instrument, that string begins to oscillate. It creates a standing wave. And the oscillation of the standing wave within that string causes the surrounding air molecules to vibrate with the same exact frequency and that produces a sound wave that has the same exact frequency as the standing wave inside the string. Now a second type of category of musical instrument exists and this category is known as wind instruments. Now unlike string instruments, wind instruments produce sound waves from oscillations of standing waves inside a column of air within a tube or pipe. And some examples of wind instruments are the flute and the organ pipe. Now there are two types of wind instruments that we're going to talk about. One wind instrument contains a pipe that is open at both ends and the second type contains a pipe that is open at one end and closed at the other end. So let's begin our discussion by looking at the pipe that is open at both ends. So let's suppose we have the following pipe shown in black, the top portion of the pipe and the bottom portion of the pipe. And within the pipe we have a column of air. So let's suppose that we produce a standing wave with the lowest possible frequency. And this is known as the fundamental frequency. And this is the first harmonic where the end value is equal to 1. So the column of air will produce a standing wave and it will look like this. So notice at both regions, at both ends, we have antinodes. These are the regions where constructive interference of the waves takes place and that means the air molecules at these two regions will vibrate, will oscillate with the greatest possible displacement, with the amplitude, as shown by these two molecules. So the molecules in these two regions will oscillate with the greatest possible amplitude. In other words, the molecules oscillate horizontally as shown by these two diagrams. Now, the middle region, this region, is the node. That's where destructive interference takes place. The amplitude of the oscillating molecules within the tube in this region is zero. So that means if we examine a molecule, an air molecule in this region, it will be stationary. It won't vibrate. And if we examine the air molecules in between the antinodes and nodes, we'll see the following result. They will vibrate with a certain displacement, but it will not be the amplitude. It will not be the greatest displacement. Now, let's suppose we go from n equals 1 to n equals 2. So let's observe the second harmonic. So let's look, let's count the antinodes and the nodes within our wind instrument that is composed of a pipe that is open at both ends. So notice we have one, two, three antinodes and one, two nodes. So once again, the antinodes are the regions where our air molecules found within the instrument will vibrate with the greatest possible displacement while the node region is simply the region where our molecules of air will not vibrate because the displacement at these regions is zero that's where destructive interference takes place now, the formula that relates the length of the column of air and the harmonic number and our wavelength with respect to our harmonic number is given by this equation. L is equal to n times the lambda n divided by 2, where n represents number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And notice that this is the same exact formula as 
for a stringed instrument. Now let's move on to closed pipe at one end. So let's suppose we have an instrument, a wind instrument, that is open at one end and closed at the other end. The first harmonic that corresponds to the fundamental frequency, n equals 1, looks something like this. So notice now, before when n equaled 1, our wavelength was equal to 2 times the length. Now the wavelength is equal to 4 times the length of our standing wave as shown by the following green region. Now if we move on to the next harmonic, notice the only way that we produce a second standing wave, the next consecutive standing wave, is if we go from n equals 1 to n equals 2. In other words, the even harmonic values for a closed pipe at one end do not produce standing waves. So we're only considering n equals 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on and so forth. So if we examine n equals 3, we see the following result. And generally speaking, the formula that relates the length the wavelength and the harmonic is given by this equation. L is equal to n times the wavelength divided by 4. And the n's range from 1 to 3 to 5 to 7, all the odd numbers, all the odd values. So this is the formula for an open wind instrument at both ends, and this is the formula for a closed instrument at one of the ends. So let's apply these two formulas in the following example. Find the fundamental frequency and the frequencies of the first and second overtone for a 30 centimeter wind instrument when the column of air with inside that wind instrument is zero degrees Celsius. So at part A, we're looking at open instrument at both ends, and in part B, we're looking at a closed instrument at one of the ends. So let's begin with part A. So we essentially want to begin by applying this formula, L is equal to n times lambda n divided by 2, where the lambda n is simply our wavelength of the standing wave for the nth harmonic. So we begin with the fundamental frequency, so n is equal to 1. So our lambda 1 is equal to 2 times L, and since L is well, if it's 30 centimeters, that means lambda is equal to 2 times 30, so 60 centimeters. Next, we move on to the first overtone, or the second harmonic. So lambda 2 is equal to simply L, so lambda 2 is equal to 30 centimeters. And finally, the second overtone, or equivalently, the third harmonic, lambda 3, is equal to 2L divided by 3. Since L is 30 centimeters, 2 times 30 is 60 divided by 3 gives us 20 centimeters. Now, to calculate the frequencies, we simply have to recall the velocity of air. The velocity of air is equal to the product of the wavelength and the frequency, and the velocity of air at 0 degrees Celsius is 331 meters per second. So, we have to use this equation to find the fundamental frequency, this equation to find our uh, frequency of the first overtone, and this equation to find the frequency of the second overtone. And we have the following values. 552 hertz, 1103 hertz, and 1655 hertz for the second overtone. Now let's move on to part B. We want to calculate the same values, the same frequencies, but now we're considering our instrument to be closed at one end. So now we have to use this equation instead of this equation. L is equal to n times lambda n divided by 4. And notice a large difference between part A and part B. The difference is, in part A, the first and second overtones are the second and third harmonic, but in this case, the, the first overtone is the third harmonic and the second overtone is the fifth harmonic. So we have 
lambda 1 is equal to 4L, we have lambda 3 is equal to 4L divided by 3, and lambda 5 is equal to 4L divided by 5. So we plug in our L value and we get lambda 1 is equal to 120 centimeters, lambda 3 is equal to 40 centimeters, and lambda 5 is equal to 24 centimeters. Once again, we apply this equation where the velocity of air at 0 degrees Celsius is 331 meters per second. We use this equation to calculate the fundamental frequency, this equation to calculate the frequency of the first overtone, and this equation to calculate the frequency of the second overtone or the fifth harmonic. So the fundamental frequency F1 is 276 Hertz. The frequency of the first overtone is 828 Hertz. And the frequency of the second overtone is 1380 Hertz.